Oh, actually, here we go now. What's up there, everybody? <laughs> like I'm a sportscaster. Yeah, okay. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the live stream. We're going to do another stream today because I have nothing else to do. It's raining, it's cold, it's windy outside. So I figured, let's do a live stream. Let's see how the audio is. I don't know if it can hear me or not. There we go. Okay, perfect. Audio sounds good. There is a substantial delay between what is broadcasting from here before it gets to your screen. So I apologize. Can't do anything about it. I don't know if I have a setting or something screwed up somewhere. Probably. Not a big deal. All right, so I figured we'll do a live stream here. We'll get some questions answered. I know you guys have been leaving questions and comments like crazy on the videos, which is awesome. But it's really hard for me to get to everybody. Um, so I figured this is the best way to do, you know, get back to your questions, comments, concerns, criticisms, and other things. So let's go jump over to chat here. I actually have some... new layout stuff and software that I'm playing with. So if it doesn't work out or something goes completely wrong or a stream completely borks, just give me a couple of minutes and I will be able to get it back. Uh, I'm using, my streaming software is OBS. I'm very familiar with OBS, but there's a lot of things that, um, that go wrong with add-on, like plugins and scripts and everything. And so the software that I'm using right now is called Up Deck, and it basically gives me a little control panel on my phone that I can change my scenes and all that kind of stuff that I have programmed in. Right now I don't have everything programmed in, I'm kind of just messing around about with it and see how, if I'm going to continue to use it or not. So far it's pretty good. I like it. It's better than the Stream Deck which Elgato makes. It's a little box that only works in Windows 10, and Windows 10 is to me is what I think, same thing I think about EasyGo. They can mm, themselves. Uh, all right, so let's see here. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I figured out how to get the chat up on the screen. So let's see how this works. We'll do that here. And then that way everybody that's watching live can see the live chat at the same time I'm seeing it on screen and we can take it from there. So that little blip you're seeing, that's coming from the capture card that is not working all so great. So let's go up here. Uh, hey, Mr. D, woohoo, yes, I'm back, I'm here. Chuck, would I ever build some rat rod golf carts for the crowds? I probably won't. Now, there's a lot of time in fabrication and everything, I just don't have that time. I'm not saying that I would never do it, just it's not something that's in the cards as of now. Uh, you have a diesel Yanmar air-cooled. You want to put in a golf cart, 3,600 RPM, 10 horsepower. I actually had a... Well, actually, I have still a Kubota diesel in uh, an EasyGo, a 94 EasyGo Marathon. It's not perfect. It doesn't run good. I have things a little bit out uh, as far as, like, the dimensions go. The belt's not a, at the right... The clutch distance isn't the same as it would be in the regular cart. I have to do a few tweaks to it. If I even do a few tweaks to it, I don't know. I might even turn it into a... I might take the engine out and turn it into a generator. Wow, what is going on with this camera? I haven't a clue. Well, if it keeps flickering or whatever, I'll figure it out later. It's gonna If it gets annoying or whatever. Uh, let's see. Who makes the best belt for EasyGo golf cart refresher cart? Any of them. I would use a severe duty belt if it were me. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about the belt wearing out as quickly. See that? There's that flicker. I don't know what the heck that, it's all about that. Uh, da -da -da -da. What's up, everybody? I see the hellos. Sound is good. Good. I see like a lot of us men, you're growing a Corona beard. LOL. No, that's just me being lazy. I haven't shaved. I hate beards. They make my face itchy. I can't stand them. Um, I have a mid-1980s EasyGo electric cart, 36 volt with a resistor coil system with a rotted out battery cage. Is it worth tearing down and 
building it back up. It could be. If that's something that you really want to do, I mean, it's just a little bit of angle iron and a welder. If you already have that stuff, go for it. It's not really that difficult. I mean, if you have fabricating skills, go for it. I would do it that way. I wouldn't buy one and put it in. I would fabricate it right from scratch. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see what else is here. I just realized that this, I have to try to, why is that text look so squished? Oh, probably because I have it all stretched out. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, why is this on top chat? No, it's on live chat. I wish YouTube would just stop screwing with the platform. Everything is so wonky and it, it just doesn't, it just doesn't work very well, the live streaming stuff. All right, let's, uh, do I ever rebuild steering boxes on an easy go golf cart or is it better to buy a new one? 98 golf cart. Uh, I don't know. I haven't, ha I have not had to really mess with the steering boxes on the golf carts. There we go. I'm actually going to shrink my camera down a little bit here like this. We don't need it up so big. Put it up in the corner. All right. We're going to change. I'm going to transition over to the new layout here. There. That's a little bit bigger, a little bit better. The st uh, text isn't so distorted. Uh, yeah. So as far as like steering boxes go, no, I don't really rebuild them. I just, if I have to replace them, they're usually pretty wore out and destroyed by that time. But I have not had to replace a steering box on a golf cart. Not because it wore out, but usually because somebody dropped a tree on it or something and it snapped the thing off the steering tube. Dun, dun. Yeah, so bring me your questions, folks. I have noticed noticed it twice now and finally learned my lesson. I have a 2000 Club Car DS FE290 that had a bad ignition or igniter slash coil go bad, and I replaced it with a non OEM, and both times they failed. Now I'm running OEM, and it has been running great. However, I noticed noticed that my rev limiter also needs to be replaced. Do they need to go OEM for that as well? Um, if you're able to go with OEM igniter slash ignition coil, I would. The uh, OEM ones are much better. I have not had any problems with my igniters or ignition coil and igniter combos. Uh, and I've had none of mine go bad, uh, which they're all pretty much from the same place anyway, but I've, I've never had experience that. I would go OEM if that's what you want to do. It's not going to be a problem. Uh, as far as the rev limiters go, Either way, either way. What's up there, Jason? Should you change the fluid in an electric golf cart differential? Yes. Yes, you should change it gas or electric. You should always main, maintain that fluid. You don't have to go crazy with that stuff because you're not driving 80 mile an hour down the interstate and putting tens of thousands of miles on it. I mean, it, it's, I would make sure it's topped off and change it maybe once every 10 years. Check it all the time, though. Check it once a year. If there's water in it, then change it. And then figure out what's going on with the rest of it, because you have other issues if you have water in it. Brain teaser for me, huh? Let's see. 2007 Club Car Turf 252 is having issues with throttle response. You have to pump the gas pedal for it to finally engage and drive. Um, carburetor. It's always a carburetor with that stuff. I have, um, my XRT has issues, but because the throttle cable, the throttle throw is so small on mine, it doesn't, it, it doesn't respond very well. I have to fluctuate the pedal because if I go from like here to here it goes from no throttle 
to full throttle, even though I could still go to the floor with mine. Those uh, Turf 2s are very touchy. You cleaned it. If you choke it, will it start? If you put the pedal to the floor and choke it, will it finally start? I think I bit my lip. I don't know. My lip. I feel like I it might have chapped lips. It, the air has been very dry. What's your favorite cart to support and work on? Yamaha or club car? Uh, the Yamaha drives are a little bit more of a pain in the ass compared to um, the older Yamahas, like the G22s. Everything from the G22 and down, there's a lot of space between the airbox and the gas tank, so it's easy to get the airbox off to pull the carb for cleaning. The drives, for whatever reason, they made the gas tank flatter and wider, so it's harder to get in there with the same tools. You have to kind of get in there from underneath. It's a lot easier, but from above, it's hard. Okay, so if you choke it, it'll it'll start right up. So it's a fuel delivery issue. So you may have bad gaskets. Um, that's really the only thing it can be. I mean, I know I have problems with my XRT. My Turf 2 XRT doesn't start easy. But when it starts up and it's warm, it's fine. And I've replaced everything on it just to kind of... It needed it because it was neglected for many years. Thinking of buying a flooded cart, uh, think again. Don't buy a flooded cart. If somebody gave it to you for nothing, then that would be that might be a little bit different, but don't buy a flooded cart. That's like buying a f flooded car. I don't know why anybody would buy a flooded anything. Yeah, once it's warmed up, no issues on it. Yeah, that's how mine is. Mine's the same way. It could be... See, I haven't really farted around with mine too much. There could be an issue with... The... Mm, as long as your, your cables... If, make sure your cables are moving smoothly. They should be. I know I replaced my accelerator and uh, throttle cables on mine, and it still does it. It's actually, mm, I can't say it's worse or better. It, it's, the, those Turf 2s are so fussy. How long did you go before you realized it was easier to pull the gas tank on the precedent to do the carburetor? Um, I don't know. There wasn't many precedents in the campgrounds that I was doing business out of. Uh, so getting a couple of them in, it, I didn't realize how easy it was to pull the, the gas tank. So I just pulling the gas tank was way easier than anything. So I always pull the gas tank on. If Even if I'm just getting in there to do something, whatever, anything with the carburetor, I pull the gas tank. Uh, if it's full, it's a little harder, but... You know, you can get underneath it with a couple straps and lift it right out. It's not that bad. Uh, da -da -da. Okay, Skeeton, you're asking why not? Oh, you're asking why not because of uh, buying a flooded cart. You uh, Buying a flooded cart is not a good idea because you're going to have electrical issues. You're going to have engine issues issues depending on how deep underwater it was i mean you can have all kinds of issues with the rear end i mean if water got into the rear you know you're you're, you're just giving yourself a lot of work if it's dirt cheap no pun intended you know 100 bucks maybe it might be worth you know farting around with but if it's you know a thousand or more i'd walk away from it but hey it's your money you can do whatever you want Jason, am I being an ass again? No. <laughs> no. That's one of those things with uh, with certain carts. Like, if you don't get them in... Because I work on everything. The only thing I won't work on are the super Chinese carts. The ones that have almost no parts availability or they're a mix 
of multiple brand carts, I won't really, I won't dick with those. So, I mean, when you don't get them in the shop, you can't really get the experience on it, you know? I'm thinking the governor was messed with on it. It's possible. It is very possible. I think the governor was messed with on mine. I just haven't, I haven't gotten under there to mess with it because I, I know how to drive it now because I, I drive it all the time. I use it as my yard cart and I'll never sell it. I'll never sell it. It's too valuable to me. Was it salt water or fresh water? It don't matter. You get a cart flooded. I mean, if it, somebody could say, oh yeah, it got under, you know, this amount of water and there's a water line, you know, halfway up the roof struts, salt water or fresh water, it doesn't matter. I mean, you're, it's, it, it, it could become such a problem. I'm not, I'm not crazy about buying, like I wouldn't buy it. If somebody's saying, I'm going to give you this cart, it was flooded. If I, if it was gas cart, you know, I would kind of go through and pull the spark plug, crank the engine over, make sure the engine cranked, not let it start. You know, obviously it won't start without the spark plug, but you pull the plug, crank the engine over, change the oil and filter before you run it, pull the carburetor and you're probably gonna have to replace the carburetor. Um, salt water kills everything. It really does. But like I said, I, you're gonna have to basically strip everything down, clean it and put it back together. More or less. So what is, what is it you don't like about EasyGo? Everything. There's not one thing. Well, there's some things about EasyGo's I like. They're comfortable. They've just gotten... They've cheapened them up over the years. They're not as good as they used to be. I hate the engine that they have in their carts. The electric ones, I hate the electric motor brake. I think that's the stupidest thing on the planet. It really is. It's so dumb. Drum, every other golf cart has drum brakes. Well, okay, Yamahas don't. The drives don't. The drives have, uh, I believe they have a wet brake in the rear. Kind of like a, what else uses wet brakes? I don't know. I'm not really familiar with the wet brakes. I mean, I've never had to do any brake work on a Yamaha drive because the uh, Yamaha drive brakes rarely wear out. I mean, unless you have a brake pedal that's sticking and you got somebody driving it and it's, it hangs all the time. But drum brakes or disc brakes, which are usually aftermarket, drum brakes, there's nothing wrong with drum brakes. My XRT, my Turf 2 XRT has four-wheel drum brakes. And it stops on a dime. I love it. it. Needs an alignment and I have to do an adjustment on the fronts, but other than that, it works It works really well. I like that. I like that card a lot. Dun, dun, dun. I'll love the new brakes. Why? But to answer your question about EasyGo, the reason I don't like EasyGo is because of the stupid things that they do to their carts. They make it very impossible, if not next to impossible, to get things done. Like if you need to pull on a gas cart, you need to change the battery out, you need a T45 Torx bit just to get in there and take the, the bracketry off to remove the battery. Now what kind of idiot... I don't know what kind of idiot designs that stuff. That's dumb. Dumb. Really stupid. There's nothing wrong with the way Yamaha has their battery to hold down. There's nothing wrong with that. The way Club Car does it, nothing wrong with that. It ran and drove right into the lake. <laughs> yeah, it's probably true. Or into the ocean, depending on where it was. Hey, Michael. In the shop, doing some spring startup maintenance on about 12 carts. Seen you were live, so tuned in. All right. Messing with me on electric brakes? Yeah, those electric brakes suck. They're so stupid. And you can't, nobody can tell me otherwise to convince, convince me that they're any good. I'm going to have to ban you, Mr. D, being a smart ass. No, just kidding. <laughs> just, just mess with you. What I don't understand is why they went from drums to 
this electric motor brake. Now, I'm not talking about the regenerative braking system that's built into the electric motor. I have no problem with that. I have a problem with that stupid thing that they bolt to the backside of the motor that has about that much contact surface to the electric motor shaft on the backside. I don't understand that at all. I mean, I, I get the whole point of people getting off their carts and they start rolling away. Well, that's where the anti-roll away feature comes in, where it could just, you know, stop letting it roll away fast and just park it. Or don't be a moron and hit the brake pedal. Now, you can't call people morons when they lock the brake, but the pedal releases. That's on whoever is maintaining those carts. Dun, 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 dun. Mr. D, I wouldn't ban you. You're not doing anything wrong. I just like busting your chops because you bust mine. Can you recommend a good steering wheel replacement for a G29? Any of them. You got to find one that suits your... If you look at steering wheels, make sure you get the adapter for the Yamaha. So that way you can use pretty much any aftermarket steering wheel. I learned something about Buggies Unlimited this week. They are a real shady company. Just beware. I ordered a tune-up kit on eBay and this company. I ordered it from was called Rocky... Rocky Top Cart. Hmm. I've never ordered from Buggies Unlimited, so I don't I don't know. Yamaha G sixteens, no service mode, just jack up her end. You can jack up the rear end or if you can find there's no detent for neutral, so you gotta kinda like find the high spot. But I would just jack up the rear end and chalk the front tires. If I wanted to buy a used club car DS gas from someone, what things do I need to check and look at? There isn't really any way to see how many hours are on a cart. Unless they, there is a working hour meter. Some of them have them, some of them don't. Um, check the oil before you drive it. Make sure the tires have air in them, obviously. Pump the brake pedal to see how well it, it locks. If the brake pedal kind of goes all the way to the floor and doesn't spring back, then that's going to have to be addressed. Uh, see, before you turn the cart on, pump the gas pedal, see how that moves. If that doesn't move freely, that'll have to be addressed. Um, let's see. What else would I check? Uh, yeah, Obviously, if it's got lights, make sure all the lights work, turn signal horn. Lift the seat, make sure the battery's secured. Uh, look at the battery cables, make sure they're not, you know, loose and fraying. Um, let's see, what else would I check on that? After you check the oil, if the oil level is good on the dipstick, see what the color is. If it looks like it's just been changed, take it for a good 10-minute drive so you can get the engine hot. And see how it, even go 15, 20 minutes if you can. If, you, if there's a way to take it for a drive for that long... You want to be able to see if the ignition system is going to quit or keep running. Uh, you want to see if the engine exuberates or shows any issues as far as hard starting, where you may have to pull the carburetor and clean it. Um, they should start right up when you step on the pedal, theoretically. If they're cold, you got to pull the choke out. Um, check the fuel filters, make sure they look good. Uh, check the air filter. I would pull the, the cover off and kind of look at the air filter and see how it looks. Make sure it's not wet. Some of the, would you say it was a Club Car DS? Some of the Club Car DSs, the air boxes, if the air intake tube, which runs under the floor and up under the, the driver's side floorboard, basically, uh, sometimes that'll get holes in it and that will fill with water. If there's water in it, the filter will be moist. If the filter's wet, it won't get... Um, it won't allow the right amount of airflow through and could cause starting and running issues. Um, you'll notice that, like, if you pop the airbox off and you smell, like, mold or, like, moisture, that's one thing to take a look at. That's a simple fix, though. I mean, all you got to do is just change the filter, and you can shop vac out that airbox if it's got water in it. Um, while you're driving the cart, I would step on the brakes. While holding the gas pedal, like, if you can go full speed and hold the gas pedal to the floor, touch the brakes. 
see how they grab as you're letting go and tapping on the brake pedal. Don't lock them up because that's really not good for it and you might go into a skid. But you just want to kind of like hold the gas pedal to the floor, driving at full speed and just tap the brakes and see how, how it feels. Because you'll feel it if it's pulling to either side, then the brakes need to be adjusted or replaced. Um, that's, that's pretty much about it. I think as long as it runs good and it's not smoking out the tailpipe, I mean, if you start it up and it starts to smoke and goes away, then you have, uh, there's bad seals in there somewhere, probably valve guide seals or piston and ring. Well, if piston and rings are wore out, it'll smoke constantly. Usually, usually, uh, check and make sure the engine, when you check the oil, the engine oil is not overfilled because it will smoke then too. Uh, as long as it starts runs, it doesn't make any funky noises, you should be fine. I mean, that's a lot of information. I mean, you just want to check the usual things, make sure the, the, the seat's not rotted out underneath. The club cars don't really rot out that quick. Easy, <clears throat> the older easy bonds, they rotted out really fast for some reason. I think it was because of that giant thick ass sponge that they used for a, a seat cushion. All right, let's see here. I only got one of two fuel filters I was supposed to get, so I sent them two emails and never got an answer back from them. Found out Buggies Unlimited is a sister company. Um, yeah, see, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Like I said, I've never dealt with Buggies Unlimited at all. Um, so I can't really speak on that. Club cars run two filters, usually. Some people bypass the second filter, which I'd, I'd rather see all golf carts use two filters, one before and after the pump. They're cheap. Throw them in. You know, if one doesn't catch the moisture, the other one will, usually. That's just my thoughts. Uh, Buggies, Buggies bought Rocky Top, so it's the same company. What year is AG8943? That's an 89. That's a club car DS. Uh, da, da, da. You're welcome, Michael. And you're welcome, Jaybird. Mr. D, 2008. Oh, it was 2008 when they bought them? Jason, I called Buggies and they wouldn't help me at all. And the funny part is the return checker extension on their phone line was shut down due to COVID, but I called back and they were taking new orders. Yeah, see, that that kind of stuff is a bit annoying. Um, I don't know. I, I, that seems a bit fishy to me. Let's see here. I want to check something. Oop. It's hard to type sideways. I have to find my... AG, that's a weird starting letter. Oh, you typed the wrong year. Okay. Go away. There was a, oh, that's a DS. Okay, that's a gas, AG's gas, duh. Yeah, AG gas, 1989. That's what that serial number reads to me. Club car DS. Okay, that's enough of that nonsense. Uh, so, uh, just to kind of bring you guys up to speed, I got the excavator back together. Gonna be crushing a golf cart soon. I know some of you guys are going to cringe when I crush one. I have to go pick up a cart uh, from, once I'm allowed to legally operate, that is, uh, from a customer of mine that caught on fire. I will try to, I'm going to use that and donate that cart to the crush.
So we'll see what happens with that. We'll see. I've crushed a whole bunch of Easy Goes in the past with it. Crumpled them up to nothing. I'm in Pennsylvania. We are at stay at home order, under stay at home orders. No, non essential, non life sustaining businesses are to remain closed until further notice. They're talking May 8th now, where we might be able to start going back to work slowly. So we'll see. I'm not pressing on my luck. I don't want to be around a lot of people. I've been good so far, so I'm going to keep it that way. And a lot of my customers are in campgrounds, and they come in from out of state of the tri-state area, which New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Um, so I I know New York City is a hot zone. I don't want to be anywhere near them. And it's not that I don't want to do business with them, but you know my health comes first before your golf cart. That's how I look at it. Michigan, huh? How's the weather? Pennsylvania, right? Today is not that bad of a day, actually. It was, it rained today. I got um, soaked when I was outside doing some work. I was hooking up the rain collection system over at the storage building. And all of a sudden it just got, I got downpoured on. It was like, where'd this come from? It was nuts. It was nuts. Golf carts are essential. Yeah, I know. I wish I wish they were essential. I really do because ugh. I just wish it was a I wish it was a better situation. 2020 sucks so far. I wish this coronavirus crap never happened. You know, this year was going to be, uh, I had a lot of plans for this year, but now financially I'm strapped, so I can't. Just can't do it. Can you post a video on best ways to tune the carb on a Yamaha G16, or do you have one that will be the same? There's not really much to tune on them. Uh, as far as tuning goes, I mean, they're really not adjustable. There's... Let me think. G16 has... Do they have a mix screw on them? I don't think they do. I don't think... And most of the golf cart carburetors don't have any adjustments on them. Da -da -da -da. Yeah, Mr. D, plug in me. There you go. That's good. <laughs> screw them and buy from me. <laughs> I stand behind my stuff. I stand behind it. If you get something, like, I don't make it, I only sell it. So if you get, order something from me and you get it and it doesn't work, I'll stand behind it. I'll make sure you get something that works because, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of downtime, but I'll send something out to you right away. See, I like to try to do that. Um, what they have, like, an, some companies have what they call an advanced RMA system where they'll, RMA is Return Merchandise Authorization where they, if you buy something and say it's within warranty and you need to RMA it for a replacement, you can pay to get the part sent out before you send the old one back kind of thing. Uh, where I will try to, as long as you know it's a legitimate reason, I will try to send out the part at the same time as you are sending me the part. Like if you send something back to me and I got to return it back into uh, say Red Hawk or Nivell as the dealer, I will, um, once you get, once you package the thing up and I get the tracking number, like if it's something out of warranty, you know, after I think it's, I think my return policy is 30 days. I don't even remember, I have to double check. But if you're outside the return window or if i like say i send you the wrong part for example i'm trying to like figure exactly how this is going to work if i send you the wrong part i will mail you a shipping label and i will get you the right part out almost on the same day usually on the same day if, as long as it's before the cutoff time for the mail or ups or fedex or whoever whoever the vendor decides to use to ship um if it's outside of the return window, like say you order something, it's the right part, but after a year and it failed or whatever, 
or something like uh, something to that effect and you needed to get a replacement part once you give me tracking information and I can confirm it I'll get the next part out to you probably the following day it all depends on like timing and mail and all that stuff I if I have it here in stock in the shop I can usually send it out priority mail um, but if I'm shipping it outside of what I have like if I ship it out from the vendors uh, Red Hawk I can ship from Jacksonville Florida Dallas Texas and Baltimore Maryland so those three states, if you're whatever state you're closest to, if it's in stock in that warehouse, I will ship it from the closest warehouse. That way, you know, if you're in Arizona, I will ship from uh, Texas. If you're in Georgia, well, Georgia or the Carolinas, for example, I'll ship it from uh, Florida. Unless you're in North Carolina, then it'll probably come out of Maryland. Unless it doesn't matter. As long as it's available, that is. All right, let's go back over here. But yeah, it can get, like, shipping it, logistics can become a nightmare if it's not um, handled well. Um, also with my website, too, because my vendor provides me the weights, the shipping weights. If you find a product on there and it doesn't have a shipping weight... It won't allow you to order it. I don't know how to get around that with my website provider. Their e-commerce thing is a little funky, but I really like them as an uh, e-commerce platform. So just send me an email on, from the contact page, and we'll get you squared away. Uh, can you ship to Ontario? I, I can ship to Ontario, but it has to be something I have in stock. Um, shipping is expensive. To Canada. Uh, amazing how negative feedback works. You know, it. one thing with companies, like, they don't realize in today's day and age, some of them don't realize, that there's, like, Facebook and Twitter and all these other social media platforms, and I would rather work with a customer to try to get them a resolution that works best for both of us. If I sell you a part and it's crap, I'll send you another part. And if it's really cheap, I'll just say keep it and throw it away. But if it's an expensive part that I have to send back for warranty, then there's going to be a little bit of shipping involved. You know, that, and that's the one thing with, like, with what I do. I mean, this is my business first. This YouTube thing is more like a hobby, and it's just something I have a lot of fun with. Um, I know I get a lot of people that watch videos, and they call or they'll send emails off. They'll contact me on Facebook. They'll send messages on Instagram, all the different platforms that I'm on. I can't answer everybody's questions that come in, especially like phone calls. If you call me asking for advice or something like that, I can't, I won't, I typically won't return those calls because I just don't have the time to, and I, it would burn up so much time on the phone. Now, if you order something or you're planning to order something from the website, yes, I'll, return your call. Obviously, if you need help with a particular product or you're not sure what to order or, you know, whatever that case may be. All right, let's go back over to comments. All right, we got, what batteries did you say you like for electric carts? Crown. Crown batteries are the only ones I use. I was approached by, I think it was a Trojan rep. I don't know if it really was or not, but they wanted to offer me uh, wholesale battery prices, and they couldn't even touch the crown price that I pay. I was like, "No, I don't want your batteries. I don't like crown. I don't like Trojan batteries. I don't like any other battery brand other than Crown." I'm. I believe those are made here. Da 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 da. Pretty sure they are made in Pennsylvania or Ohio or something. Except, I can't remember. Oh. oh, never mind. I thought somebody was pulling in my driveway. Yeah, they're in Ohio. Okay. What's a good battery for non-electric? Any specs, cranking amps, etc.? You want to make sure that you replace it with the factory size battery. 
Um, if you start, now you can get a electrically larger battery that's in a similar group size, it'll fit a little bit taller. That's usually fine, as long as it fits. Uh, if it's wider or deeper, you know, front to back, left to right, and it doesn't fit right, you can't properly anchor it down in, in the cart. And for most people, that's fine. If it doesn't, if you don't anchor the battery down, I always tell people, anchor the battery and put the right one in there. Stop dicking around with trying to save money and getting a smaller battery just because, you know, I see a lot of people put lawn tractor batteries in the golf cart. And that electrical system is designed around that battery, not the lawn tractor battery. I see you have a bag of 10 on your site. Well, they work on most carts. They'll work on any cart. I used those filters, uh, FIL0014. Let me say, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I guess I haven't went to my web, gone to my website on this browser yet. FIL-0014, yes. Okay, so you're looking at the bag of 10. Oh, there's the mailman. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's FIL-0014. What's the part number on that one? 14A. Yeah, those will work. Those are the uh, filters I use on every cart because they're, um, they don't have that barb on the end of the filter that makes it impossible to remove after the, you know, the fuel line sets in and you can't pull it off and you end up breaking the barb off inside the fuel line and then you gotta cut it. I use these because they slip on and they're, they're a very easy filter to change. You're 216 miles from I'm 216 miles from your house to mine. Round trip is 432. Uh, I don't know about that. I've moved, so I don't have my public my address published. I'm not at any of the available addresses that you can find me under. My address is P.O. Box 706, Moscow, PA. And I do that for security purposes. Let's see here. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, filters are a decent price. Um, it's the shipping usually. If you're going to order anything, I'd order a couple of things to kind of keep your shipping down. It does help. Mm -hmm. No, that's an old address. I told you I moved. My new address you won't find because it's not published. Oh, wow, look at that wind. It's very windy today. The wind is just starting to pick up. It was windier earlier today, and I'm just checking out on the cameras here, making sure that tree is, <laughs> it doesn't, okay, we're good. Um, anyway, yeah, no, you won't find my address because it has, I have not registered it with anything or published it, so, yeah. If you do show up at that address unannounced, um, there is a good chance you will be shot. It is not a public address. Just, just forewarning you. Okay. Any more questions? Another 10 minutes or so, I'm going to probably cut the stream because my throat is getting sore from talking. Actually... I'm going to get a drink of water, and you guys can go with me, audio-wise, because I'm not tethered to my camera. Alrighty then. There we are. Okay. Any more questions, guys? Anything else?
Dun, 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 dun. Let's see, on this DS1989, what size engine is in this cart? Um, which engine is it? Is it the vertical engine? Or is it the overhead valve engine? Have you ever put a Mikuni carburetor on a golf cart? I'm thinking easy go. I believe that is the OEM carburetor brand, if I'm not mistaken. I think. I don't know. I don't remember now because I don't pay attention to that stuff. I only care about if it's dirty or clean and if it's working. Appreciate my time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, unless I get a whole bunch of questions, I'm going to cut, cut the stream off. I apologize if I'm burping in your ears for those of you wearing headphones. <laughs> See what we got here. Okay. Put my phone on, do not disturb. Single spark plug overhead valve. Uh, you wanted to know what was your question? Hang on, let me read back here. I think they're ten horsepower. Thank you for the information today. I love my golf cart and listening to you. I thank you. I love my golf carts too. Especially my turf too. Factory lifted turf too. I gotta get uh I gotta do some brake work. It hasn't been working warm enough to work on my cart yet. Yeah, this weather sucks. April has been Kind of shit. Okay, so here's a question, and maybe I'm an idiot for asking. No stupid questions. Nobody has a stupid questions. Uh, but why is it that the shocks on the front of the club car are just squishy, meaning they don't bounce back automatically? They're probably just wore out. Going back to installing a snubber. We'll see you later, Mr. D. They are just push and pull type, right? Um, they should push back out. I think. I don't remember now. Now I can't remember. Do they put... I think they... Do push back. How many hours should I have on an easy go golf cart before I adjust the valves? I would do it once a year. Yeah, as far as the, the shocks go, I think they are. I think they. Sh See, I don't remember. I don't remember. There's a lot of. Like, I know the. Maybe they don't push back. Maybe they are. I'm trying to think now because I, I get confused when I think about... I don't think any of the golf cart ones push back, to be honest. I think... No, wait, the... Yeah, mm. See, I can't remember when I changed them. The new ones, some of them come strapped in the collapsed position, and some of them are not. And I can't remember off the top of my head which ones do that. Um, but if they're... The, the front shocks on a club car are not really great. It's only a single leaf suspension in the front. Um, it's not really a true independent suspension like the Yamahas are. Um, so you don't want it to be too hard because it will bounce when you're going down the road. Because those cars are, those club cars are so light. The gas ones are really light. I mean, you could pretty much, two people can pick the front of that thing up and flip it up end over end. They're really not a lot of, there's not a lot of weight to them. They're all aluminum frames. Um, 
but I can't remember. I, I don't want to say yes or no on those shocks. I can't remember off the top of my head, to be honest. It's been a while since I've actually had to change shocks. Usually when I tell people they need shocks on their cart, they're like, oh my God, that's expensive. And it's like, it's like a set of shocks is only like 30, 40 bucks or something like that. Depending on how hard they come off, it's, it's not that expensive to change them. All right, any more uh, any more questions there, folks? Dun, dun, dun. I am just waiting for this to load. So why is this not loading now? Have you guys had any experience, or not experience, but have you been experiencing any crap with YouTube? Because I'm noticing this page is not loading correctly. YouTube Studio sucks. It really does. Hang on, the chat just quit. Give me a second. Anybody that's saying anything? This one is still working, but this one is not working at all. What the hell is going on here? Do you sell club car repair manuals? Yes, I do. Let me uh, see if they're in stock. They're not cheap. Those stupid books are so expensive. I don't own any of them. I don't know why I don't own any of them. I probably should have them, but... Yes, YouTube sucks. Lately it does. Lately it does. See, YouTube went from like a platform where people would upload stupid videos and people getting hurt all the time to now all these creators, myself included, where they make a... Well, the people that make a living off of this stuff, it's ridiculous. But it's... And they cater to that whole thing now. Like... I don't do this for the money. I do this just because I like to make videos. I don't do it for income or anything. My business is my income. This YouTube thing is not. Let's see. Manuals on the website. If you do a search for LIT dash, you should be able to find the manuals on there. Um, what do you have? You got the 2000 DS FE290 engine. That's going to be, I'm, not everything is sorted out on the site because I got a whole bunch of new um, products. So I'm trying to get the new upload to be squared away before I do anything. Uh, let's see, I'm just trying to find the manual. What year did you say that was? 2000. So that will be, let's do club car. I'm looking on the vendor website right now to see what the part number is. Gas and electric, 01 to 02, that ain't it. 48 volt, that ain't it. Gas, here we go. 909 to 11, that ain't it either. <laughs> that ain't gonna help. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I don't have it on there. I got the one with the Subaru engine, that's... That ain't going to help. There's the club car precedent IQ. That ain't going to help either. 09 to 11. 09 to 11. 05 to 06. I might not. Oh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get it for you. Boy, that sucks. Yeah, they don't. I, I couldn't even get that for you if I wanted to. Yeah, I don't see that's. So it's going to have to be a newer generation and up, I guess. The, the 2000s are the pre. You have the pre-2000, right? 
I think when we were talking last stream. Do you have the aluminum, the silver aluminum frame for the top, or do you have the black frame? If it's the silver aluminum one, no, I'm not going to be able to get you a book for that, unfortunately, which kind of sucks, but you'll have this. <laughs> Let's see here. I want to check something. I was going to check something, and now I don't remember what I was going to do. Do you ever have that moment, like when you're sitting here and you're like, what am I going to do now? Silver aluminum, okay. Oh, on the wheels. I'm talking about the, the, the roof supports. Do you have silver aluminum or the black steel? If you have the silver aluminum uh, roof supports, then no. If it's the black steel, the one inch square tubing, then yes, like that's going to be the 01, basically. Uh, let's see here. I'm just looking at something really quick. I don't see one here for that. Black steel. Why the hell did it hide black? Okay, so you have the newer one then. Uh, the O1... Let's see here. I, uh, I don't know. It's going to be a little tricky. Yeah, maintenance and service manual, club car DS, gas and electric, 01 to 02. Uh, you can use that one. That's going to be LIT-CC01. Let's see if I can... go here let's see if it's on the page yeah it should be on the page here this one here I'm gonna give you the link that would be the manual you will need um, I show there's not very many of these in stock these are very limited And that price you see there is very close to the price I pay for them. So they're they're not cheap manuals. Um, but if that's something that you want, if you need, that'll work. Because that'll be considered a 2001. 2001. Yeah, that's a service and maintenance manual. That book should have everything in it that you would need. I uh, don't know if that's the... Exp Got the exploded parts view. It should give you part numbers and everything, too. I think that's going to be the winner for you, from what I can see here. That's the only one for that year. Yeah, everything else is for a newer. So that that's going to be pretty much it that I can get you, unfortunately. Uh, anything before that? No. The link that's in the comment section here in the in the chat, that's the link to the one for your cart. That's the maintenance and service manual. The part number is LIT-CC01. Let's see, what's this one here that you're looking at? I don't know if this try it. That is That's the supplemental manual. That's uh I'm not exactly sure what they do with this supplemental. I think the supplemental might have, it's basically like a cheat sheet, basically. 
but I know the the maintenance and service manuals are the complete the complete deal. At least in my experience, that's what we used to have at the golf course. Or had when I worked there anyway. So yeah, okay. That is, that looks like that's gonna be it. Alrighty, I am going to call the stream right there. I think that's gonna have to do it for now. Um, for some reason, this is just not working right and I have to shut the stream down. So I think in the next coming days, we're gonna do another stream. Uh, today's Tuesday, maybe Thursday or Friday I'll do another one just to kind of do follow-up stuff. But right now that's, that's going to, I'm going to call it right there, guys. That's going to be pretty much it. So as usual, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Ring that bell so you're notified anytime I upload a video or go live. Like the video if you liked it. Hopefully you liked it. Leave a comment down below with any questions you may have regarding this live stream, I guess. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video.